Hello, hello, if I could get everyone's attention, if we could find a seat. We're excited, we'd like to get started. Um, first off, I want to send condolences from uh, Governor Justice. Uh, he went down to watch our wonderful Marshall Thundering Herd capture a national championship last night. We're so excited about that, and you can imagine that he didn't get home till three or four o'clock in the morning. So he sends his apologies, but he's, you know, he's been here, I think, two times, and he was looking forward to coming back again. But he and the rest of us are so excited for some of the wonderful things that are getting ready to, to, to happen this summer at Tigert Lake. We've made a lot of investments in the past, but what we're here to talk about today is going to take that one step further. Um, so I've got four or five people that I want to recognize, and I want to give them a few minutes to come up and speak. Uh, but first, I want to thank my staff at Tigert Lake State Park. Jim, you and your staff have done a wonderful job. Uh, we've, we've done a lot of work here. You all have been great to work for. The park looks beautiful, so I wanted to recognize you for that. Uh, the next person I want to bring up here, yes. The next person that I want to bring up to here has become a very good friend of mine in the, in the legislature. Um, as you know, she works hard for all of West Virginia, but she works a little specially hard for this area in West Virginia. And uh, I usually can, I usually get pretty good results calling people, but if I hit a snag or something, she's always opening up the right doors and helping me get to where I need to do. So I want to first thank her for all of her help and, and her guidance. And I want to give her a couple of minutes to come up here, talk to you a little bit about Tiger Lake and some of the other things. And I think she's got some recognitions too. So I would like to invite the majority leader up here, Amy Summers. Thank you, Director McDaniel, and welcome everybody to an exciting day at Tiger Lake. We are all just thrilled, thrilled that this has finally happened. This has been a five-year vision, and it started with my good friend Brian Smith. Brian, I know you, can you stand or not? <laughs> Brian Smith came to me five years ago and said, Amy, I've got an idea. We need a water park at Tiger Lake. I want to do this. And I said, I want to do this too. So over the next five years, we worked with all of these partners that you see here to make this happen. And that's what it took. It took a lot of people working together, having the vision for this county and for this lake to make this happen. So I don't want to go on for too long, but I'm just so thrilled with all the people that we have and all the different positions that have work together because you can just you meet a snag with one one particular bureaucracy and it's over but everybody had the same vision and everybody wanted to see this happen so i'm not going to name individual people because i will leave someone out and the last thing i want to do is hurt someone's feelings and do that because i know it it took us all so i'm hoping that as the other people speak they will recognize those people individually but just thank you to everyone and thank you to brian for starting this vision five years ago Thank you. Okay, next I'd like, uh, this park out here is a, is a uh, collaboration between, it's a public and private partnership. And one of the things the governor loves to see is when we go out and we involve people, the community, the entrepreneurs, the experts that know how to put stuff on, and we, and we try to go into business with them and do, do some things to make this happen. So this was a collaboration between Paul Buechler and Ace Adventures, and Brad Reed from Virginia State Parks, the chief of our Virginia State Parks. So I'd like to invite them both to come up to the podium here for a moment. Now, Ace Adventures is also involved with us down at Pipe Stem, but um, these two gentlemen got together and they have to deal with me every day, and I, real, I feel bad for them on that. But they were able to hammer this out, and they worked with our wonderful friends at the Army Corps of Engineers, Stacy, all your staff, thank you so much. I mean, they have, they, I called her on the phone and the first thing they said was, hey, we gotta get, we gotta work this out with the Corps. So we worked it out with the Corps, but we put this together in less than a year. And that, you know, if anybody's worked in government and tried to put all these things together and it took a lot of people. So I want to give these two individuals a minute or two just to tell you a little bit about what you're gonna have down here. And then uh, I'm gonna invite Chelsea up here. So Paul. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Paul Buechler and I am CEO of State Park Adventures. Um, in, 19, in 2019, 
West Virginia State Parks, Ace Adventure Resort, and myself formed a partnership to uh, begin offering adventure activities at state parks. Our first state park was Pipestem, um, and we did that in 2019. Um, today, we offer, we actually have the best zip line in the state of West Virginia that we offer to the public. We have an adventure lake, very similar, a little bit smaller actually, to the uh, lake we're opening today. Um, on Memorial Day weekend, we'll be opening a very new product. It's called the Adventure Zone, Pipe Stem Adventure Zone. That product includes skeet shooting, drone flying, rem remote control car racing, uh, a high-end laser tag, and we threw in axe throwing as a good old West Virginia thing. <laughs> um, so we're very happy. In 2020, um, the director asked us, would you open up a, 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 an adventure lake at Tiger State Park? So we came down and we immediately fell in love with the state park, the beauty of it, um, and, and the state park itself, and we started. Um, so it's, it's been a, about a year we've been working on this. this the adventure lake has 26 uh, very large inflatable toys to play on. Uh, we've, I think, put 35 truckloads of sand out there, so we've got a new beach. We've got 200 uh, lounge chairs to relax on. So there's something for everyone. There's little kids' toys, there's big toys. Um, I want to thank the Governor Justice. I want to thank Chelsea, uh, Secretary Ruby. I want to uh, thank Director McDaniel, I want to thank Superintendent Browning, and all the management of state parks, and all the hardworking employees. Um, everybody's been so helpful to make this happen. Uh, I truly believe that with the investment being made in state parks uh, to upgrade them, as well as adding activities to, uh, you know, to have people want to do something when they come to a state park or they, they go on vacation. I think the state is really setting itself up to have world class or at least, you know, best of class uh, adventure resorts. Uh, and we're looking, we're very excited about, you know, investigating and uh, other opportunities at other state parks. Thank you very much. <laughs> So I'm going to tell just a little bit of a story that, that illustrates uh, a point that I would like to make. So I just uh, reached my 32-year anniversary with the DNR State Parks just a few days ago. Yeah, when I started back in 1989, I was the superintendent of Tuindui State Park, which is a very small little area over in Point Pleasant. And the local garden club came to me, and they wanted to do some landscaping. They wanted to plant some flowers around the museum and mansion house there at Twin Dewey. So I, I can remember distinctly, I called my boss uh, in Charleston, the district administrator at that time, and said, sir, the garden club has come to me and, and they want to plant some beautiful flowers, do some landscaping around the museum. And he said, do they want to plant native species of flowers? And I said, no, they want to plant, you know, beautiful yard type landscape flowers. And he said, that is just exactly the type of non-traditional feature that we cannot allow on our state parks. Ladies and gentlemen, we have evolved. <laughs> I, this is my first time seeing this. I, I'd seen the artist rendering, seen the engineering drawings, uh, didn't do it justice. When I came down onto the, into the parking lot last night and looked over here, it's just like, wow. Um, so I, I want to say some thank yous too. I want to say thank you to Paul. I want to say thank you to our governor who's not here today because of the state park evolution that I talk about. The overwhelming majority of it has happened during the past four years. And that's a direct credit to our governor. It's a credit to our director. It's a credit to our tourism secretary and all of the innovation and things that we're bringing not only here to you good folks in Taylor County but, but across the state. I'm very proud to be a part of it. 
Jim, your staff, yourself, Pat, as always, we, kept, we keep handing out expectations and you keep meeting them. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Okay, I want to talk to you. The next person I want to bring up here, if you had a chance to drive through the park today, and I guess you did if you came this way, but if you went down, you'll notice there's a lot of new paving going on down there. And about, and this is no joke, I mean, you could never get something done like this this quick without cooperation. About three or four weeks ago, that wonderful young lady that spoke earlier said, Director McDaniel, Amy Summers, she said, Director McDaniel, you know, we need to get those new parking areas at Danny's. we got to get those paved. And I said, oh, I'm out of bullets. I said, I can't, I've got to spend about, I just don't have, I can't get it done. It'll take forever. So she said, well, see what you can do. Well, I just happened to be going into the governor's office, and two wonderful men were just be coming out of his office, Secretary Bird White and this wonderful gentleman up here, Jimmy Riston. And in about 30 seconds, I told him what we needed. I told him what I could do. And Jimmy Riston said, I'll send an MOU over to you and we'll get her done. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've only been in government for less than five years. But from what I, that would have never happened ten years ago. So, uh, you know, I, I like to, I, I, and again, like Amy said, well, I'm going to miss somebody. But i got to tell you, that just started something. We've got our county commission here today, right? Ready? Stand up. If you're in the county commission, members of the commission. These folks heard what I was going through and they called and said, what can we do to help? And they're working right now on trying to help us financially. So it is truly a group effort. Thank you for coming out here today. Sam, you know, you've done a lot of other things you've been helping me with, trying to, and it's, it's appreciated. Thank you, Mr. Veltry. Um, but I want to bring this gentleman up here because he, is, he gets it. You know, I mean, every time, if he can't do something, he says, Steve, I can't do it. But most of the time, he tries to find a way to help us out. So all that beautiful paving, all that gorgeous parking lot and everything, we're not, I hope the governor does, you know, the governor was here last fall, and he made a speech, and he said, the biggest complaint I get is we don't have enough parking. So he looked at us, and he said, guys, we need to take care of that. Well, it hasn't even been eight months, and you got 70 or 80 new parking spots, and a lot of it has to do with the guy that I'm going to bring up here right now, Mr. Jimmy Riston from the Department of Highways. Jimmy? Thank you, Steve. Although uh, I, I can take credit for moving it along a little bit, I, it, it was 18 seconds that we got that MOU going on. So, uh, but but it all started with a, with a text that I got from Delegate Summer, and uh, when we crossed paths over there, we we th this project was done by the time I left the building, as far as I was concerned. And the reason that happens is because of folks that uh, folks that I work with, and uh, I've got several of them sitting around here today: uh, Mike Cronin, Darby Clayton, Earl Gaskins. Aaron Stevens, uh, these these guys get it. Uh, they understand exactly what we're up against to get our, get our roads in the condition that we need them in. Uh, we have gotten overwhelming support from the governor on, on down immediately from the minute he took office to start down the Roads to Prosperity program. And that, that, that has a trickle effect. That freed up state dollars. That freed up all these other, other things that made possible where we can, where we can react quickly where we can move at the speed of business instead of the speed of government. This is a perfect example of your government working for you, working together. And that's exactly what we did here at, at every level. And uh, you can see the results. And wow, what a facility. You do a great job, Superintendent. It's great. I, I would like to, uh, to recognize one particular person. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, throughout the state agencies, we uh, we always we always have a uh, employee recognition week, and we do that uh, in the in the spring every year. And this year, we're uh, we went through a worldwide pandemic last year, and we weren't able to do that last year, and that uh, we 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 really were disappointed that we weren't able to. So I made sure that we could do that this year, and we went so far as to uh, I instructed every division and every district to choose an employee of the year. For, for each organization, and uh, District Four, District Four, you couldn't have chosen any better. I'm gonna tell you the uh, the the guy that we're going to recognize here today is just exactly what a DOH worker is. Not not what not what the old DOH worker uh, template is, but what the new DOH worker is. This guy's had a rough time. He's a, he's really had a rough day. He uh, he couldn't be here with us today because he's uh, he had to go back into surgery but he has been battling an illness for some time this guy is so special though 
he uh, he'll come in in the morning and get his crews going, come in, go get his treatments, and come back to work. That's that that's who he is. You never see him that he doesn't have a smile on his face or he's not working on something. I, I'm shocked that we were able to get this paving job done without him, Merle. I really am. Uh, but he uh, he's crew chief for a paving crew up here, and uh, it just. Uh, if I had two or three hundred more like him, uh, our highway woes would be over really quickly. And uh, I'd, I'd like to ask Earl Gaskins to come up and accept this award on behalf of James Heflin, uh, the District 4 Employee of the Year. He's so special. The uh, as soon as soon as he gets out of the hospital again, we're going to bring him down to Charleston, and the, and the governor's agreed to have some pictures taken with him. So uh, we we really appreciate that. But highways has never been more supported from the governor's office to the legislature, uh, and that's how we're getting it done. That's how we're making a difference out here. Give us a little time, and we'll get it. We'll get it where it needs to be. Uh, but we're gaining on it. Uh, this is a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. And like I said, I know he doesn't want to take credit, but he always answers the phone, and that means a lot. So I'm getting ready to introduce our guest speaker. Now, it's hard when you got the governor supposed to come up here, and I know you sure as heck don't want to hear from me. You hear from me all the time, but, you know, the governor's made a lot of great decisions in his four and a half years in office. When I got here, he said, you figure out what needs to be done, and I'm going to pair you with this young lady, and whatever you guys need to do, you do it. And I have to tell you, he has supported us. Everything that's happening here, I know some people have recognized Governor Jim Justice, but folks, he gets it, and he has been there all the way. And the, one of the best moves that he made was hiring a lady named Chelsea Ruby to run our tourism division. And when I got to the state, and I have the best staff, I'll argue with that all day long, the step park staff there and the wildlife there are the best, but they didn't have any tools. She went to work to help me, and within two years, we had websites, we had our campsites online, we had things, we brought West Virginia in the 21st century. It would have never happened without her guidance and direction. So I'd like to introduce to you my friend and the Secretary of Tourism, Ms. Chelsea Ruby. Thank you, I'm so happy to be here today. Um, tourism is such a bright spot in our economy and I love that everyone is starting to recognize it. We're starting to see huge dividends on all the investment and I'm just thrilled to be here for another day of another ribbon cutting on another fantastic facility. I feel like we're, I love Brad's story about the evolution. Um, when I was driving up here I was thinking about the perfect storm. So it's a little bit of an evolution and the perfect storm all together. If you think about four years ago when Governor Justice got here, the first thing he said is, we've got to play in the big leagues. So he said, we're going to triple that advertising budget. We went to the legislature, almost overwhelmingly, everyone agreed with it, immediately we did that. And we started playing in the big leagues. We started competing with the states around us. Then we started seeing all this investment. So at the state park level in the last four years, you've seen over $150 million and new projects, and that doesn't even count ones like this one that are through public-private partnerships. Then we saw this national park designation. If you guys didn't see the news articles over the weekend, national spotlight again on West Virginia for the world-class tourism that we have. And then COVID, and COVID obviously has just wrecked havoc on the entire nation, has been a terrible thing. But if there's one positive thing that is gonna come out of COVID, it's gonna be that people have fallen in love with the great outdoors again. There's a whole generation that for the last year have been outside. Maybe folks who wouldn't have been outside otherwise. The governor really got ahead of that. As soon as the pandemic started last year, it was in late March maybe, the governor called Steve and I and said, we would really like to start giving away fishing licenses for the next two months. And Steve had a heart attack. Like literally I thought Steve like had hung up from the call. He was like, we can't afford it, we can't do that. And the governor said, no, I'm telling you, this is not gonna cost us money. This is gonna get a whole new generation of people to love fishing and to love the outdoors. So we got Steve back to life, it was a couple of weeks. Then the governor said, we're gonna get 40% off at all state parks. Steve again was like, we can't do it, Chelsea, we can't do it. 
I said, yes, we can. We got to trust him. The first one worked. The second one's going to work even better. Again, we had all-time record-breaking attendance in our state parks last year. We blew every record out of the water. And this was coming off of three years of a 20% increase in revenue. And we started blowing those records. So it has been an amazing, amazing ride. Um, and I'm here to tell you, I think we're just at the beginning of this. Um, every survey that has been done on travel and tourism in the U.S., they all say one thing, and that's that people want to be outside. They want to be in the great outdoors. And we all know that we've got the best playground in the U.S. So I'm thrilled for what the future holds. Um, we're seeing great payoffs here. I can tell you that reservations year to date at our park, so just this year in 2020, are outpacing 2019, so not even 2020, but two years ago in what I consider a normal year, by over 100%. And that stays so far this year. But if I look at reservations, we're still at 100%, over 100%, about 118%. So we know that people wanna be here um, and we are thrilled to welcome them. I want to conclude by thanking all of you. I have the easy job. We get the money from the legislature, we go and advertise the great product, but the hard part is the hospitality, is welcoming all these people into the communities. So I wanna thank each and every one of you for everything you do when people come here. In West Virginia, we have one of the greatest return visitation rates. 87% of people who visit our state on vacation come back, which is an amazing, amazing number. And that's because of each and every one of you. So everyone here, I hate to name names because I'm gonna forget somebody, but Majority Leader, thank you for everything you do to support us. Like Steve, I always know if I need something, you're there to support tourism. Um, everybody in state government, everybody at the parks, the parks employees, CBB directors, county, everyone, everyone here, each and every one of you greets folks, whether you know it or not, when you're in your local gas station, your local stores, your local restaurants. Um, and so we just wanna thank you. So thank you guys. I look forward to the future. I look forward to many, many more announcements, many, many more um, breaking of records and attendance and all of those great things. So thank you guys for having us today. Um, and let's cut the ribbon. I do. Right here, Steve. Oh. You? Pass them out. Okay. Susan. Paul. Let me have sharp vision. Brad. Susan. I don't know if I should be allowed to have the sweet. Hey, go. Wow. Is there something? They're very large, so they're going to drop them on your foot. Do we have enough scissors? Because I can stand yeah. in the yeah, back. Yeah, you're good. Watch. We're good. You got, you got scissors? Yeah, yeah, I got one. Okay. She comes with a whole posse. We're good. I got, I got a lot of scissors. <laughs> All right. Okay. This is something I've never seen. Put the ladies in the middle. All right. All right. All right. Give me a minute and we'll count to three. I see Chelsea's pro. Yes. Okay, everybody. One, two, three. Woohoo! All right. Ladies. Just keep the ribbon for your own folks. And that concludes our um, thing today, I guess our event. Uh, I'm going to be hanging around for a little bit. So I know the majority leader is going to be here and the county commission. If there's any questions, our parks folks are here. I want to thank you all for coming out today. And I hope to see you on our, what's the date of our grand opening? For 22nd. This? The 22nd, yes. which is Saturday? Saturday. Oh, wow. Hope to see a bunch of you out here Saturday. Um, so thank you.